Hopefully everybody in YouTube land. What we have here is a box. Well, you're probably wondering what's in the box. Well, I don't know that yet either. This came from someone that sent something in to repair and nice fragile stickers all over the box and it was treated, you know, with delight as expected, you know, so nice and nice and fragile. All right, so this video should be about repairing a Macintosh Color Classic analog board. So this is going to be our next project for, you know, the never ending list of projects that seems to be happening. All right. Bubble wrap. Let's see. We have a note and I want to protect it so we don't, you know, thank you for looking at my analog board. You are an awesome part of the community included analog board that let magic smoke out donor analog board missing caps very rough so one leftover caps from my recap i've done this sheet other side shows caps i did replace message me on discord if you need info all right well at least we now know what's going on we'll hide that out of the way for now we have lots of bubble wrap, lots of room in the box. We'll throw all that off to the side. I'll clean it up later. More bubble wrap. Alrighty then. So, we have an analog board, which I will set right here. We have another analog board which I will carefully unwrap when I can wrap my hand and I'll set it right out of the way too. So let's take care of this real quick. All right, now we got that out of the way, we can figure out what we're dealing with here. So we have a pair of Macintosh Color Classic analog boards. And these things are known to do some funny stuff. I mean, they all need recapped, but I don't typically just do general recap stuff. I mean, I have been lately, but not typically. I usually, when it comes to accepting outside work, I usually take the tough dogs, the ones that even after a recap have some weird issue. So one of these has a hard short on it and I don't know which one is which yet. So this one looks like the one that is the correct one. Too many ones. All right, so we have that, and then we have this one here, which obviously does not want to cooperate for removal. Yeah, that one has that cap. So this is the parts board. This is the good board. So let me clear all this off, and then we're going to start troubleshooting this board and figure out what's going on with it. All right, now that we got the parts board out of the way and I got the box sitting over there for now because I'm kind of running out of room in here, I need to figure out what to get rid of and how to reorganize. That's a topic for another time. Um, anyway, so now that we have that board out of the way, we can start to analyze what we have going on here. And according to the note, thank you for looking at the analog board, including the analog board that let the magic smoke out. So, what we do know so far is that the analog board let the magic smoke out somehow. I'm not sure yet entirely what that means exactly. I'm sure we'll figure it out soon enough, but that's the only information I have to go on right now. Uh, donor analog board and then uh, leftover caps from my recap. Should have done them all. Yeah, you should have. This sheet, other side shows the caps I did replace. So let's see what we have here. Uh, there's the cap kit. Where did you come from? Console 5. Yeah, I like that place. It's a real quick and easy way to get parts. 
I've used them once already for uh, a floppy drive belt. That's for another video that I probably won't post because I'm still fighting with that drive. I mean, it is completely asinine what I'm going through right now with that drive. Uh, but that'll be for another time. So I have this guy now, which shows me what's been replaced and what is not. So, low profile, 3300. See, here's the thing that I don't know if this has been done already or what the specs of these caps are. I mean, there's some pretty good capacitors. They're, they're Matsushita Panasonic brand. So they're very quality, very good quality capacitors. What I do not know is which ones of these are low impedance, low ESR, and which ones are standard. Because when you're, when you're, the way switching power supplies need to operate is if you're using capacitors in the switching power supply, they really need to be low ESR, low impedance, because of the ripple current. There's high frequency switching and filtering going on here, and the lower the ESR, the lower the impedance of the capacitor of the circuit. So they won't get as hot and they won't drift up in value and fail as easily. And it, it, it lowers the ripple down as well. So really in a switching DC power supply, you really need low impedance capacitors uh, or low ESR. There's a difference between the two, but I don't feel like, uh, I'm just gonna blur the line here. Um, uh, other ones in other critical areas, signaling caps, couple caps can be just general purpose. It's not that big of a deal. This capacitor here can be general purpose. It's not a big deal. So this is what we have right now. So I need to figure out what's going on with it. My guess, if it let the magic smoke out, we've got a short somewhere on the rails. What I don't know is where that short is and where it exists. So let me get you set up in the stands and we're going to go ahead and start troubleshooting this thing and see if we can find anything. And the purpose of this video is step by step on how I troubleshoot a board, especially an unknown board like this. The step, the steps required from the ground up from beginning to end. Normally I don't film this part because how old am I getting film who films anymore slash rant. Uh, so Normally when I record this stuff, I don't record the process of, you know, troubleshooting. I just say, here's the part that's bad. I fix it. Well, this one, I'm going to do this video a little differently because I'd like to go through step by step what the potential fault might be on this board. Right now, it's an unknown. So I'm going to have to pull out my machine and eventually take it apart, hook this board up into it and see what we have going on. But for now, while we have the board, we can do some dry checks with the multimeter and we're gonna check some key areas here to make sure that we don't have any faults or shorts on the, uh, the board. And what I typically do is when it comes to troubleshooting, it's the, the three most important things you have to keep in mind are sight, sound, smell. Those are the three most important sen uh, you know, senses when it comes to troubleshooting. So. Right now, smell and sight. Sound, nah, who knows? That won't help you until it's powered up. But sight, do we have any burning? Do we have any scorch marks? Do we have any overheated components? Like back in here, there's these diodes back here that always get hot and go bad, you know, things like that. So, and then the smell, okay? Anybody that's worked on electronics before know what the smell of burnt carbon smells like when something fails. So when a chip blows up or a resistor burns out, it gives that pungent smell that is unmistakable from any other smell. The smell of fried electronics. So, with that said, those are the two most important senses. And we're gonna go over this board and we're gonna make sure, from the, the sight sense, we're gonna make sure that we're not, we don't have anything in here that stands out. First thing I wanna check is the DC-DC power supply, which is this guy here. Uh, well, actually it's an AC-DC, but one of these is responsible that run, for, for running the computer and providing the voltages to the computer on this particular board. This one's responsible for generating the B-rail voltages and all the, the scan voltages and stuff for the analog section. So the two are separate power supplies. One can fail while the other one operates and vice versa. So I'm going to check basic things like the inductor. I don't see anything burnt there. I don't see any transistors that appear to be cracked 
again use the sight senses so we've got something going on here like that looks like it's been jerry woggled who knows quirko twinkulated and then now i'm not seeing anything stand out let's check the deflection circuit let's check the resistors to see if there's any heating of the resistors you know looking for signs of heat scorching from where something smoked nothing is standing out to me so i'm kind of amazed there's the damper diode there's the horizontal output transistor there's a horizontal drive transformer hdt some diodes some capacitors the flyback transformer which that doesn't look good hold on what's going on here okay so that's silicone all right that's good that's silicone i thought thought for sure because if that flyback's bad it's game over i mean whoa what is this on top there's a booger on top here Ooh. ooh 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 that flyback might be bad maybe huh well i'm gonna have to inspect that what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna ring check that flyback and make sure it's not defective um and you'll see that here in the video but yeah, everything looks good as far as I can tell. Alright, so yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get you set up in the stands. Let's get all this done and get you set up in the stands. Alright, now we have you all set up in the stands. We're gonna go ahead and start taking a look at this. So we know that all these caps have been replaced. Well, we're gonna look at it like this. We know that they've all been replaced. So we're going to go ahead and get that out of my way. Take the meter. I'm going to get the meter set up so you can see what I'm testing here. All right. Put this back a little. That way it's better. It's in frame. All right. So first thing we got to do is we have to work with this stupid masking tape and get it out of the way. I think this is a little excessive, but hey, beats it are getting damaged in shipping, I suppose, but it all needs to go away because it's in my way. All right. Okie dokie. Now, first thing I'm going to do, just for quick dry checks, I'm going to put it in bio check mode, and then we're going to go across to all the rails here. So, Let's check this rail. Slowly creeping up. It's a large capacitance. Let's check this rail. Seems to be okay. Let's check this inductor, make sure it's not open. It is not. Let's check this guy here. All good. Let's check this guy here all good the other key point to check is the horizontal output transistor on these to make sure that it didn't get exploded and that is loose let's check the horizontal output transistor I don't see anything Nope, we're good. So, horizontal output transistor is good. I'm not seeing anything that would be an immediate cause for concern. Maybe check this guy up here. It's charging up. All right, we're good. That diode's good. This is good. Let's check this diode. It's good. All right, this is a voltage regulator, so let's check it. It appears to be good. It's well, relatively. It's not shorted. I'm looking for shorts. I say good, but I'm using that in a relative sense because I'm looking for shorts to make sure we don't have anything that's out of the ordinary here. I'm not seeing anything standing out. Let's check this diode. It's good there. 
Let's check these diodes. They're good. They're not shorted. Alright, so let's check that diode. I'm just checking randomly. Alright, at this point, I have to take the shield off because on the bottom of this board is a shield. So I need to get this shield off. So let's get that off first so we can move on a little further. Alright, so. need to figure out exactly how this thing comes off. It's been so long since I worked on one of these boards. Pretty sure. Wow, that's been broken. Holy crap, so is that one. Alright, well, that has to get slid out like that and then lifted off of the shield. Like so. The shield is now free from the board. So at this point, I can actually take a look at the board and we get a better shot of what's going on here. So, sight, sound, smell. Let's start with sight. Do we see anything that is potentially, oh, there's a big scratch there. I wonder what that is. Make sure it's not shorted with anything insane. Okay, that's all good. That looks fine. Let's see. Flyback transformer. I don't see any broken solder joints. I will remove the transformer just so I can test this thing. Because I will ring check it. Because these are kind of known for their flybacks to potentially develop faults, but we will see. I'm not seeing anything out of the ordinary. It looks like the capacitor recap job was uh, done properly. I'm not seeing anything standing out. If you don't want to watch this part, feel free to skip around. Got some bad solder joints developing there. That's a problem. That's got to be fixed. That's the deflection yoke connector. So we got some bad solder joints developing there. Won't cause a burning smell, but it is definitely something that has to be paid attention to. Now, we got a couple of diodes here. Oh, I see one that's got a burn mark on it. I wonder. I wonder if that is our fault. Yeah, I mean... Let's see, let's see, there's surface mount diodes right there, and one of them, I don't know if you can see it, but one of them has a little bit of a splotch on it, so let's check that, let's see, let's see if that's our fault, let's, let's go into diode mode, sight, sound, smell, so let's check the one next to it, seems to be okay, let's check this one. Not bad. No, not bad. Well, hold on. It's not really... Yeah, that seems strange. Diodes are supposed to be one way. Yeah, see? You see how that one's increasing in resistance? Or voltage drop, I should say. That one's staying at about 337, 338. That one in the reverse direction. A little higher. It might be alright. Let's take a look at this circuit. Yeah, let's take a look at that circuit. I want to make sure if that's, that's not a burn mark. No, that looks like flux. Alright, so that's just flux. So, when checking a power supply for shorts, the best way to do that is to follow the circuitry. So, 
we have a transformer here, the switching transformer. There's two of them here. So we need to look for the grounds, which is what this big fat trace here is, is the ground. Um, but then we have one, two, three taps coming off of this. So what we need to do is we need to measure the diodes across each, each tap. We have this one here, which we checked. It's okay. This one here, which seems to be okay. And then we have another one here. It seems to be okay. Now, what we want to do is check from ground to all three of these points. Here, here, here. So that rolls out any shorts in the secondaries as far as on this side of it. We have another diode here. Seems okay. We have... I think that's it. That's the, the, the analog power supply. So let's check the computer side here. So again, we have some grounds here. what well, I'm assuming is ground. So we have a diode. We have one branch here. Rising slowly. Seems to be okay. These should be ground. No, they're not. That's ground for sure. Alright. So there's that tap. This tap here. So this comes across here, goes to this diode, so here's another tap. That doesn't seem bad. Then we have another tap that comes around, goes across this resistor, and potentially comes here. Yeah. No shorts on the secondaries. None at all. That's ground. Hence the little spring alloyed here. It's ground. Alright, that seems to be okay. So what could it be? What could it be? Let's check these. Seems to be alright. Let's check the horizontal output transistor, which is holy crap, that's bad. There's a bunch of broken solder joints there, too. Alright, seems good. Now, base to emitter on a on a NPN style horizontal output transistor will always read shorted. And the reason why that is is you're reading through the drive transformer, which is on the other side. So if you follow that, this trace here from the base goes right into the one end of the drive transformer. The other end goes right around to the emitter. So, as long as base to collector is not shorted, that transistor is okay. So, that leaves. Let's check this random diode while I'm over here. So, the only thing that's standing out to me at this point, let's check the primary side just because. First thing I want to do before I do that is the capacitor charged, which is here and here. No. Not shorted. Check this MOSFET. It's good. Let's check this MOSFET. It's good. So for all intents and purposes, this power supply should run. Where the burning smell is coming from is definitely not from the power supply section. Unless something was hard shorted somewhere else. It's a regulation side. All that looks okay. Let me 
this is pretty screwed right here. Alright, so that has to be reworked. That has to be, that one's completely broken. These have to be resoldered. So uh, there's some resoldering that has to be done here. Alright, so the next thing to do, oh geez, that was about ripped out of there too. All right, let's take a look at that. Yeah, that ground's ripped out. So, yeah, that's that's not good. Okay, next point. Next part is let's take a look at. I don't know if this is going to come on camera. Let's grab this. I need a prop. All right. So now let's take a look at. flyback yep there's some broken solder joints on the flyback like this one here is got a ring crack completely around it I mean it's done this one's done so that's that's gonna cause problems right there I mean you're, you're it's not gonna operate properly until that is fixed yeah this is this is bad this could be the whole problem right here it's all it could be the horizontal yoke winding ring crack is there so really that's the only thing I can potentially see being a problem here that one needs resolder I mean that one's really bad that's it I don't see anything of any insignificance next thing I want to do is look for cracks in the board that's the other thing, sight. Cracks in the board. I'm not seeing anything that stands out to me. So I want to check. Here's the other thing about how these work too. The flyback transformer has multiple taps on it. And the reason why is the flyback transformer generates voltages not just the anode voltage for the CRT itself but it also generates voltages for the various scan circuitry so the vertical output stage the um, pin cushion control the x-ray protection any other little minute voltage the B boost voltage for the to drive the collectors of the um, the you know the cathodes or the, the the video amplifier transistors that drive the cathodes of the CRT all that's generated by the flyback so if the flyback doesn't work properly nothing else is going to work properly in the analog side either so I think what we're going to do is we're going to just check some diodes because I can't see the diodes on that side of the board so let's go ahead and check all that I gotta figure out where they all are there's one down there Let's check you. Nope. It's not shorted at least. Let's reverse the leads. That's good. There's another one here. Let's check that one. That one's good. Let's check any fusible resistors that might be burned up in between there. I don't see any, so. The last thing to check. The absolute last thing to check. Oh, I see another diode. Alright, yep, that's good. Okay, I'm coming up pretty empty right now. At least nothing serious. Let's see if I can get that shield off now. Let's get this shield off. Because i got to get up inside here.
there's an eat hole. Oh, pretty sure. You know what? That's going to be fun to get off because I actually have to unplug that first, dummy. It's been a while since I've worked on one of these. The problem, this heatsink is really in the way. I can't come out here because it's peened over. It's in the way. Pretty sure I've had this shield off before. This is making me look like an idiot right now. But that's okay. This is a, a, a complete walkthrough. Why would they do that? That makes no sense to me. That's the dumbest design I think I've ever seen in my entire life. Why does that not surprise me? It has to come out that way. There's no other way it comes out. This heat sink is literally right in the way. That doesn't make sense. Why would that be? Oh, let me fight with this for a minute. All right, so finally fought with this thing and fought with this thing and got it out. I mean, that was a pain. It turns out this metal plate was caught. It was kind of like it was shifted over a little and these holes were caught against these flanges right there. <sighs> All right, well. Let's check a couple things in here and see what we have going on. There's, there's, looking for a diode, looking for anything that's been burnt open. So, here's a diode here. This looks like a Zener diode, so I want to check that one. Nope. I want to check this one. We're good. Those two diodes are good. Let's do another visual inspection. There's the x-ray protection chip. I don't see anything that's out of the ordinary. Nope, let's move that out of my way. Looking for any signs of smokage. I think what we're going to have here, to be honest, I don't see any evidence of burning. I think what we're going to have is the bad, because look how loose that transit, that, that's bad. So we got, we know we have broken solder joints on the yoke connector that's back here. We know we have broken solder joints on the horizontal output transistor, and we know we have broken solder joints on the flyback transformer. So I think our next step here is, you know, go ahead and check the solder joints with new, you know, for fresh solder. We'll, we'll go ahead and fix that. But uh, what I was thinking about was check this. The, the CRT neck board and make sure there's nothing in here that needs to potentially you know be replaced this is like trying to talk walk chew gum at the same time can't do it all right so again with our senses sight sound smell and I already see something right now I already see something Let's look at that. See that? That's a little dark. That could be a problem. What is that connected to? On the inside. Oh, yeah. There's a resistor right there. Actually, no, that's not the resistor. That's a problem. Man, that's a... That provides the current for the H stat, known as the horizontal static convergence. This is control right here. That's the H stat control. Anytime you're working on a Trinitron setup and you see H stat, that's what that means. Again, we've got a pile of bad solder joints. So I'm not surprised. The CRT neck board needs to be resoldered. All these pins there. 
Uh, there's some burning here, and I think that is the wire. It's the closest. No, it's not. That's the resistor. Yeah, that resistor's cooked. What does that go to? Goes right into the CRT socket. Oh man, that you know what? That resistor is coming up through around the corner. It's going to this CRT pin. I wonder if the CRT is shorted. And it's going to, on the other side of this resistor to an orange wire. That orange wire comes out and goes right into the flyback. Yeah. That's the filament. That heats the filament. So there's a resistor in there. You can't see it until I get the shield off, but there's a resistor in there that's also the uh, dropping resistor for the filament. So I think what I'm going to do now, I, I got a course of action. I'm going to take care of all the solder joints. I'm going to check that resistor, resolder this board here, and then try it out. Um, I think we'll be okay. There's no driver transistors on here that run the cathodes because it's in this chip that's down here there's a chip dedicated for that so i think we're good um yeah we'll just resolder it and we'll see what happens all right so now we know what's going on with the board at least what we think is going on with the board so let's go ahead and do some uh resoldering here at least to, to take care of the known trouble spots. Move that out of my way, move that out of my way. And then I gotta pull out my redneck fume extractor, which is just an old fan. Actually, this fan came out of an Intellistar 1, one that I scrapped out. So, works good for this purpose though. this in the way so we don't alright here we go start attacking these solder joints here Feel free to skip over this part if you don't want to see me resoldering a board. Otherwise, I'll leave it in here for entertainment purposes only if anybody wants to watch it. Alright, there's that one. Let's go ahead and take care of the horizontal output transistor because it has a fault. Yoke connector. Let's see, what else? What else? What else? It's the only thing I see right now that stands in, out that needs work, but I am going to hit these power supply transformers up. Just because I'm not taking any chances. Go ahead and give this bridge rectifier a little bit more solder, just for good measure. 
is your high voltage, high current devices. Well, not so much high current, but high voltage for sure. Okay. All right then, so make sure there's no bridges there. I don't see any. Two more I gotta do. I got this one down here that's gotta go. I got one down here that has to go. All of these are bad. Probably from stresses over the years, most likely. Try to break through the corrosion. Alright, so. I don't see anything to be a problem at this moment in time. Alrighty then, so I suppose at this point what we have to do is just to go ahead and get this thing put in the machine. And then, well, which means I got to go out and go get the machine, but I want to get this thing put in the machine and check it out. But actually, you know, before I get too carried away, I just realized that I have to resolder this thing because this one was giving me some fun. So I need to really check that resistor because that resistor is a problem. It's been hot. I need to check this diode too. So let's go ahead and do that first. Let's get it out of the way before I get too far ahead of myself here. That's good. Is this resistor still good? Yep, it is. Four ohms. 4.8 actually. Alright, well, what does that mean exactly? What's the resistor color codes? They're all scorched. Man, that thing's been hot. Alright, well, let's take care of that while we're here. Because these CR the CRT sockets got some pretty bad solder joints as well. So it's one of those things to where if you're working on one of these boards, this is something you have to keep in mind. This is something you're going to have to do to keep these things running properly for as long as they possibly can. It's to take care of the known bad solder joints. And the ones you just saw me take care of in this video are the most common ones. Flyback, horizontal output transistor, yoke connector, CRT neck board, almost always. scares me a little bit but we'll see all right check that one it's all good all right now I think we can safely test the board Okie dokie then. So let me pause the video and we're going to go ahead and get this uh, the machine out so I can put this in it. And actually before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and get the shield back in because without the shield, we, you know, who knows. So 
Let's make sure everything is in the sockets, the holes. I think that's it. It's all in place. All right, so set that off to the side. Let's go get the machine and see what we can get out of this board. All right, I got the machine apart. This machine probably hasn't been turned on in, oh, I don't know, five years. So it's safe to pretty much assume there's going to be no store charged in this machine. So I can go ahead and start pulling it apart. So, I don't recommend removing this until you discharge it, but in my case, I don't care. Since it hasn't been, you know, a short duration since this has occurred, so. Alright, that analog board. This analog board still needs recapped. This is the, well actually no, this isn't the original analog board. This, this analog board was something I bought a long time ago. The original one was too far gone when I got this machine. There's actually a funny story behind this machine. Um, there was a guy that used to live behind my old house in Hamilton and they were cleaning the house out and selling the property because he had passed away. And I knew the guy, Mark Johnson. He passed away and um, this was being thrown out and a buddy of mine was doing some of the work to clear the house out and saw it and grabbed it for me so this is actually from one of the old local school districts so this was something somewhat of a interesting find and of course I got it free because it came out of the trash what I need to do now is check all right well I gotta unplug the yoke doofus there we go that would help and then the speaker wires are not incredibly important Alright, so this guy needs recapped eventually. This board works, but it's got some quote unquote issues. Alright, so that's out of the way for now. I'm going to go ahead and recenter that. Just make sure you're in frame for the most part. All right, so we do not know what this board exactly was doing. But what we do know is it had incredibly bad solder joints. I'm thinking getting this in here is going to be absolute barrel of fun. Also, the CRT is not original either. I've had to change it. I still have the original CRT, but um, what ended up happening with the original CRT is the convergence was off, and I was trying to get the convergence, and unfortunately, I was using a metal tool in one of the slugs in here. So I actually, I think it's in this coil over here, I actually broke the slug in the yoke. So I figured, well, crap, you know, so I just went ahead and got another CRT. You know, and at that time, when I was working on this, this is 12, 13 years ago, so the CRTs were fairly commonly available, you know, because people were still scrapping these machines back then. These days, you don't have that anymore because, I mean, there's people out there looking for CRTs because of what's been going on and running into bad CRTs and stuff like that. So, unfortunate reality, but that's where we are today getting harder and harder to find parts for these machines. It's getting harder and harder to maintain these machines without having some kind of technical aptitude. But that's the point of making these videos is so you all can see how this is done. All right, so that is in there. Alright, that's done, and then now I'm going to have this guy connected to the ground. 
The CRT diagram is what that is. All right, it's grounded. Now, it's just a matter of determining if this thing's gonna work. And the only way to know that, I think I'm gonna leave the camera right where it is. So if it lets out the magic smoke, we're gonna know about it because it's gonna be on camera. So, okay, that is in place. That is all locked in place. So I need a keyboard and I need a power cord. Alrighty then, so I'm, I'm putting my motherboard at risk in here. Um, but whatever, it is what it is. So here we go. Plug the power in, flip the switch. Hey, I think we have something. I don't have any high voltage yet. I'm gonna leave my finger on the switch just in case this thing goes haywire. So, I did not hear high voltage. We do not have high voltage. Actually, who wants to correct me in the comment section? I know why we don't have high voltage. So, let me move this out of the way and I'll tell you. That cable is supposed to plug into that plug. this cable right here it would actually help I don't know what you all think but it would actually help to plug the cable into the plug so yeah all right let's try that again that would be why we don't have anything oh I heard high voltage Anytime you hear that little static, that's how you know. Let's see, do we have a picture? I can't tell. Oh, I heard high voltage again. So filaments glowing in the back of the tube. I can't really tell. Oh yes, oh yes, we got it. Hold on. We got it. Oh yes. We're golden. It is functional. Now, the convergence and stuff is out of adjustment, but that's to be expected because the, um, you know, it's not set up for that CRT. So if you change an analog board or use a different CRT, you got to do a full setup again. But, but yeah, we're, uh, we're cooking with fire now. So really, that's all it was with this video. It's a pretty simple video. It was just bad solder joints. That's really it. Seems like it's stable. Everything's working. It's bad solder joints. So anytime you get a dodgy analog board, even after a recap like this one was, just know that always check your solder joints. And that is going to be it for the troubleshooting of this, uh, this board. There's nothing more I can do at this point except let it run. So uh, anyways... Again, my Discord link is in the bottom of the video description. Um, please like, please subscribe. If you enjoy this video, thumbs up. If you don't, you know what to do, thumbs down. So thank you for watching. Please feel free to leave a comment. And until next time.